हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू फेयर्स क्लाउड लर्न टू लीड गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल दी स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी विल डिस्कस वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट करंट अफेयर्स ऑफ टेंथ एंड इलेवंथ ऑफ अप्रैल 2022 यू कैन सी द बेस्ट इमेजेस ऑफ द डे बट टुडे वी विल डिस्कस वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट करंट अफेयर सो वॉच दिस वीडियो टिल लास्ट बट आई एम रिक्वेस्टिंग यू ऑल दी स्टूडेंट दैट यू हैव टू डाउनलोड आर एप्लीकेशन करियर्स क्लाउड फ्रॉम द डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स लिंक आफ्टर दैट लॉग इन विद द ई मेल आई डी देन क्लिक ऑन दिस क्रैक करंट अफेयर सेक्शन टू सब्सक्राइब आर करंट अफेयर्स फॉर वन ईयर as well as for 2 years both the subscription prices are very much low but how we are covering this current fair we are providing you daily section in the daily you will see three things one is detail second is question and answer format and third is the quiz section which you can attempt on our application on daily basis next is the weekly section again you will receive three things one is detail second is question and answer format and third is the quiz section which you can attempt on our application on weekly basis most important section is the monthly and we are providing four type of pdfs one is detail second is question and answer format third is best 100 current fair that is also provided in the form of question and answer and fourth one is pocket pdf it means two liners and the three liners current fair will be provided to you so that you can revise these current fairs in quick format before your exam but to enhance your performance further we are providing 20 most important topic wise pdf it means if you want to cover one particular topic then you can use this topic wise pdf If you are a banking student we are providing three things one is detail second is question and answer format and third is the quiz section but all these three things are only related to banking and economy and you can attempt this quiz only on our application on monthly basis if you want to cover all the past current fair of 2021 just from single pdf then you can use this exam pdf we are providing detail budget and economic survey expected question and answer will be provided to you so that you can recall that examiner can make these type of questions from budget and economic survey If you are appearing for your respective state exam, then we are also providing you state current fair, and we are covering every state and union territory. So all these things comes under only one subscription. You have to just download our application careers cloud from the description box link. After that, log in with the email ID, then click on this crack current fair section to subscribe our current fairs for one year as well as for two years. Both the subscription prices are very much low. But if you are a new student, you are just starting your preparation, then I am advising you to subscribe for two years. and we are providing 10% extra discount on both subscriptions if you use this code ash10 and if you have any query you can email us or you can call us on this number or email id so let's start 10th and 11th of april 2022 current affairs but first of all you have to like this video share this video as maximum as possible and please subscribe this channel if you are new on this platform and join our telegram group from the description box link so that you can receive the notification on time here is the question First question is so much lengthy. Which institute from India has been named in the world's top hundred universities for studying nineteen subjects in the domain of engineering? And this is according to the QS World University Ranking by Subject 2022. We already covered this ranking on the eighth of April video, but only one question was left. That's why we are covering this question again. And answer of this question is IIT Kharagpur. C is the answer. So according to the twelfth edition of Kerala Siemens or QS World University Ranking by Subject 2022, Indian Institute of Technology Kharagpur has been named as one of the world top hundred universities for studying nineteen subjects in the domain of engineering. So this is IIT Kharagpur, and IIT Kharagpur stands out from others with its multidisciplinary mandate for transforming curriculum to a knowledge economy. And the institute ranked thirty seventh in two thousand twenty two. even an improvement from its 44th position in 2021 in mineral and mining engineering so you can see seven rank improvement of iit kharagpur in the mineral and mining engineering category but on the 8th of april we covered engineering and technology category so in electrical and electronics engineering this institute ranked 80th in 2022 and 90th in 2021 so again you can see 10 ranks improvement by iit kharagpur in the electrical and electronics category even in engineering and technology it ranked 101st in the world and third in india because other two in india are iit bombay and iit delhi iit bombay ranked 65th globally and iit delhi ranked 72nd globally so this is 101st rank this is iit kharagpur under the engineering and technology but remember out of top 100 institutions in engineering and technology only two are there from india one is iit bombay second is iit delhi and you can also remember yadavpur university which is situated in west bengal ranked 5th among the best indian institutions among the top 500 worldwide in arts and humanity subjects category and it is the only state university in india which was ranked in the qs world university ranking in the sphere of arts and humanity 2022 this is important and uh, this is 12th edition you have to remember again we are covering this question 
and this is QS World University Ranking by Subject 2022 and it covers a total 51 disciplines grouped into the five broad subject areas. These five broad subject areas are like Social Science and Management and under this category Harvard University top, Engineering and Technology, Massachusetts Institute of Technology uh, is on the top, Arts and Humanity category, University of Oxford is on the top, Life Sciences and Medicine, Harvard University again, Natural Sciences again, MIT University, United States of America is there. So we already covered on the 8th of April 2022 video. Moving to next question. Next question is in the very important question section. But first of all, you have to like this video, share this video as maximum as possible. And please subscribe this channel if you are new on this platform and join our telegram group from the description box link. Here is the question. What is the name of the first ever all private space flight mission that transported astronauts to the International Space Station? So the keyword here is first ever all private space flight mission and name of this mission is Axiom 1. So D is the answer and uh, the company who launched this mission, this is SpaceX. So SpaceX successfully launched Axiom 1 to the International Space Station and this mission is the first ever all private space flight mission that transported four astronauts to the International Space Station. Even this is also the first commercial mission to the International Space Station. And the mission is launched in partnership with Axiom. That's why space flight name is Axiom 1. SpaceX and the NASA and it is a major step in the expansion of the commercial space ventures collectively referred to as the low earth orbit economy and the crew included three paying customers because total four members are there and uh, it carried four astronauts to the space station after lifting off from the NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida and uh, out of four three are the paying customers one is Larry Connor say, uh, second is Etienne Stibb and third one is Mark Pethy and along with the fourth person ex-NASA's astronaut and Auxium Vice President Michael Lopez from Algeria. So you don't have to remember all the names just remember only one name ex-NASA's astronaut and Auxium Vice President Michael Lopez and the team of four astronauts would reach in the space station on 9th of April 9th of April 2022 later they would enter the orbiting laboratory after docking of the SpaceX Dragon capsule and during the 10-day mission studies and research on the impact on the space on the human brain, cancer research, development of hardware for space habitats etc will be concluded by the astronauts. And you can also remember Larry Connor who served as the mission pilot officially became the first person to touch the ocean surface, ocean surface and also visit outer space in the same year like in 2022. So remember Larry Connor who served as the mission pilot officially became the first person to launch or to touch the ocean surface and also visit outer space in the same year 2022. So remember this is the first commercial mission to the International Space Station and also the first ever all private space flight mission that transported four astronauts to the International Space Station. And remember about International Space Station, it is a multinational collaborative project involving five participating space agencies. One is NASA, which is USA Space Agency. Next is Roscosmos, which is Russia Space Agency. JAXA, which is Japan Space Agency, European Space Agency and Canada Space Agency. And International Space Station will be uh, retired around 2030. And remember about SpaceX, it was founded in the year of 2002. Its CEO is Elon Musk and its headquarters is in California, United States of America. Moving to next question, Air Force Commanders Conference was held at which place? So this is static question, just remember the place and place is New Delhi. And remember the Union Minister of Defense Rajna Singh Ji inaugurated this three day Air Force Commanders Conference at Vayu Bhavan in New Delhi. And the theme of this conference is optimizing human resources and the conference will focus on the conduct of operations in a smart and efficient manner. And the officials discussed issues pertaining to preparedness, upcoming challenges and tasks ahead. And mitigation of threats posed by the drones will also be brainstormed during this conference. Even the defense minister also launched this Meher Baba competition too to provide a boost to growing indigenous drone industry. So it means it aimed at developing technology for a drone based system to detect foreign objects on the aircraft operating surfaces. In simple word you can say that just to promote the drone industry indigenously or just to promote the concept of make in India in the drone industry. Even Indian Air Force did an excellent job under its humanitarian relief program which is known as Operation Ganga. This is very important. This was launched on 26th of February 2022 
and it was an evacuation mission to bring back all the Indian nationals who are currently stranded in Ukraine. And there were around 20,000, 20,000 Indians, including students, stuck in Ukraine under the Russian-Ukraine armed conflict. So this is important. And you can also remember this is Air Force Commanders Conference, which was held in New Delhi, inaugurated by Defense Minister Rajna Singh Ji. And Chief of Air Staff is Vivek Ram Chaudhary. Vivek Ram Chaudhary. Moving to next question. What is the name of India's first indigenously developed polycentric prosthetic knee recently launched by which institution? So you have to tell me two things. One is the name of this prosthetic knee. Second, it is launched by which institution? And name of this prosthetic knee is Kadam and it is launched by IIT Madras. So you can see here IIT Madras launched this India's first indigenously developed prosthetic knee which is named as Kadam. So the Kadam will help people with the above knee amputees to walk in a comfortable gait. And you can also remember the knee prosthesis was developed in association with society for biomedical technology and also with the mobility India. And Kadam has multiple axis hinge joints for rotation which provide great control over the prosthesis and gives a maximum knee flexion of 160 degree to make it easy to sit in cramped spaces like buses and autos. And the Kadam prosthetic knee is stable for both short and the long residual limbs after amputation and you can say comes with a patent 4 bar geometry that provides stability even on uneven terrain and improved ground clearances. So you have to just remember the name of this prosthetic knee because it is first indigenously developed prosthetic knee named as Kadam and it is launched by IIT Madras. Now we are moving to next question. Which bank launched Vikash Siri Sampath 111 a new deposit scheme of the bank. So this is known as Vikash Siri Sampath 1111 in new deposit scheme. And this is launched by Karnataka Vikas Gramin Bank. So answer of this question is A. And chairman of Karnataka Bank P. Gopi Krishna. Remember the name P. Gopi Krishna who launched this scheme and it is a new deposit scheme of the bank. And it is known as 1111 days scheme. And the scheme is limited tenure of only 1000 111 days which provides an interest rate of 5.70% for the general public and 6.20% interest for the senior citizens and it also offers the highest rate of annualized return of 6.03% for the general public and 6.60% for the senior citizens as customer can deposit a minimum of 10,000 rupees and a maximum of 2 crore rupees under this scheme and even the prospective customer of this scheme will earn higher interest rate and in this the higher interest rate offered among the nationalized banks in India. And remember about Karnataka Vikas Gramin Bank, this is very important because chairman is P. Gopi Krishna. We already covered because he launched this scheme. Headquarters is in Darwa. Darwa is in Karnataka and it was founded in the year of 2005. Moving to next question. Which state has developed an anti-corruption mobile application which is known as Corruption Free Application 1064? So static question, remember the name of the application, this is corruption free application 1064 and it is launched by Uttarakhand. So answer of this question is C. So the vigilance department of Uttarakhand has developed an application which is anti-corruption mobile application and name of this application is corruption free Uttarakhand application 1064. And this application was formally inaugurated by the chief minister of Uttarakhand, Pushkar Singh Damiji. So you can see here the user can register his or her complaint using the application or by making a call on 1064 number and the number is received from the government of India. It aims to make the state corruption free and ensure good governance carried out in the transparent manner and the strict action will be taken against the corrupt employees and swift disposal of all complaints will be ensured and the application will be available in Hindi as well as in English and all complaints would be registered on the application that the whole data would be kept safe and if the complaints received on the application are not related to the vigilance department then it will be forwarded promptly to the CM helpline and the department concerned. So it is very important especially to make corruption free Uttarakhand. So this is state of Uttarakhand Chief Minister is Pushkar Singh Damiji. Moving to next question. Which company joined with Ohm Clean Technology for promoting hydrogen based mobility solutions? Again, this is very important, but this is static question and this company is Oil India Limited. A is the answer. So Oil India Limited and Ohm Clean Technology Private Limited, which is a hydrogen fuel related startup, inks an incubation agreement for design, for integration and development of the hydrogen fuel cell powered e-bus and liquid organic hydrogen carrier solution. So it is for the development of 9 meter hydrogen fuel cell powered e-bus and a liquid organic hydrogen carrier solution. 
and the startup will be nurtured and mentored by the Indian Institute of Technology or IIT Guwahati. So this partnership would help in achieving Atanirbhar Bharat or Self-Reliant India initiative of the Government of India and also open the doors to the hydrogen economy in the northeastern because Indian Institute of Guwahati is basically mentoring the startups. So under the ongoing pilot projects for the hydrogen generation and blending, Oil India Limited is now sponsoring Ohum Clean Technology Private Limited in the fields of hydrogen storage, transportation, mobility solutions, which shall be successful in running hydrogen fuel cell powered e-bus in the northeastern India. So this tie-up is basically for development of the northeastern states and also to develop the mobility technology in the northeastern state. And this is Oil India Limited. Its headquarters is in Noida. Noida is in you can say in Uttar Pradesh and Chairman and Managing Director is Sushil Chandra Mishra. Sushil Chandra Mishra. Moving to next question. Unique Identification Authority of India signed a memorandum of understanding with whom for technical collaboration. So MOU was signed between the Unique Identification Authority of India under the Ministry of Electronics and Information and Technology and the National Remote Sensing Center which comes under ISRO. So answer of this question is B and this is for the technical collaboration. So you can see here UIDI and ISRO Inc. Pact for the technical collaboration. And as a part of this new agreement, this National Remote Sensing Center, which comes under the ISRO, will develop the Bhuvan Aadhaar portal, which will provide information and locations of the Aadhaar centers across India. And the Bhuvan Aadhaar portal will also allow residents to look for appropriate Aadhaar centers by location according to their needs. And this National Remote Sensing Center will also provide a web-based portal to collect and store data about existing and new enrollment centers to improve citizen-centric services by carrying out regular statutory inspections. And the collected data will be verified for quality by regionally designated authorities to ensure that residents have accurate information on the centers along with an online visualization facility. So just remember this is Unique Identification Authority of India. Remember it was established in the year of 2016. Its headquarters is in New Delhi. And who is the CEO? CEO is Dr. Saurabh Garg. Dr. Saurabh Garg. Moving to next question. Defense Ministry has allocated dash of the domestic capital procurement or acquisition budget for domestic private industry in financial year 2022-23. It is specially for indigenization of the Indian technology and also to promote self-reliant India in the defense industry. And this is total 25%. So answer of this question is A. So to promote the private industry, micro, small and medium enterprises and startups in the defense production, Union Defense Ministry has allocated 25% of the defense or the domestic capital procurement and acquisition budget amounting almost 21,000 crore was allocated for domestic private industry in the financial year of 2022-23. So government reserved 25% defense procurement budget for the domestic private industry. And the defense ministry has already signed 68% of the capital procurement budget of almost 85,000 crore for the domestic public and private industry during the 2022-23. So this is very important. Just remember the figure. This is 25% of the domestic capital procurement and acquisition budget. Move into next question. And you can also see here an amount of 1500 crore has been signed for procurement from the startups, including innovations for defense excellence startups within the allocated domestic capital procurements. And India allocated 5.25 lakh crore for the military spending in the financial year 22-23 budget, including a total capital expenditure is 1.52 lakh crore for the modernization of the armed forces. So we are focusing on the defense equipments, defense manufacturing, especially to become self-reliant in the defense manufacturing. This is very, very important. Moving to next question. Highlights of the RB's first bi-monthly monetary policy of 2022-23. So this is RB's first monetary policy of financial year 23. So India's gross domestic product growth at 7.2% for the financial year 23 from 7.8% estimated earlier. This is very important because it is predicted by RB. Earlier they predicted 7.8% growth, but now they predicted 7.2%. And for quarter one, they predicted 16.2% growth. For quarter two, they predicted 6.2. For quarter three, 4.1%. And for quarter four, it is 4%. But overall, they predicted 7.2% growth for India in the financial year of 23. And the projection is based on an assumption of the crude oil at $100 per barrel during financial year 23 and supply chain disruption due to the ongoing Russian-Ukrainian war. And discussion paper on climate risk and sustainable finance will be released 
so to facilitate better understanding and assessment on the climate related financial risk by the regulated entities a discussion paper on the climate risk and sustainability finance will be published shortly for feedback by the rbi and rbi also introduced cardless cash withdrawal facility using the upa across all the atms so at present the facility of the cardless cash withdrawal through the atm is limited only to a few banks for their customers at their own atms so this proposal will enhance the ease of transactions and also reduce fraud such as card skimming card cloning etc but the policy rates are unchanged you can see here policy rates are unchanged so repo rate is 4% reverse repo is 3.35 msf is 4.25% and bank rate is 4.25% so you have to remember the policy rates because these are very very important moving to the next section it is our important question section but first of all you have to like this video share this video as maximum as possible and please subscribe this channel if you are new on this platform and join our telegram group from the description box link so that you can receive the notification on time here is the question asian development bank and french firm ldc inc pact for the 100 million dollar loan to help small farmers it is not for india it is for so many countries like india indonesia pakistan thailand so many countries are there so asian development bank has signed usd 100 million dollar it means almost 760 crore loan pact with a french firm which is known as ldc to help small farmers in the countries such as india indonesia pakistan thailand vietnam to recover from the economic challenges posed by the pandemic covid-19 and improve their resilience to the climate change impact so just remember this is asian development bank so the pact will be covering around 50000 small holder farmers of rice cotton and the coffee cultivators from across the countries by ensuring climate resilient farming practices reliable income support and help offset the impact of the supply chain disruption due to the covid-19 pandemic so in simple words you have to remember this is asian development bank and french firm who will finance 100 million dollars specially for the small farmers moving to next question so next is in the one liner important point here is the first point karnataka gramin vikas bank launches vikas sri sampat 1111 deposit scheme we already covered this question bandhan led group to purchase idfc mutual fund for rupees 4500 crore so bandhan financial holding limited led consortium has won the bid to buy and acquire idfc asset management company worth rupees 4500 crores and remember bandhan financial holding is the holding company of the private sector bank which is known as bandhan bank and remember hdfc also sells a 3% stake in the bandhan bank so in a bulk deal hdfc sold this 3% of the shares or you can say almost 4.96 crore shares to the other companies so hdfc sell this stake in the bandhan bank you have to just remember and total cost is almost 1522 crore rupees and remember about bandhan banks md and co is chandrashekhar ghosh chandrashekhar ghosh headquarter is in calcutta west bengal and tagline is aapka bala sabki bhalai your benefit everyone's welfare next seb constitutes two working groups for the mutual fund not important so securities and exchange board of india has established two separate working groups for the asset management companies and the purpose of the two working groups are like to review the role and eligibility of a sponsor of a mutual fund to facilitate growth and innovation in the industry and to streamline the role and obligations of the trustees of mutual funds but you have to remember sebi here sebi's new chairperson is madhabi puri you have to remember the name she is the first woman chairperson of the sebi and its headquarters is in mumbai next is nha launched nha stands for national health authority has launched a new version of health benefit package health benefit package of 2022 under the ayushman bharat ayushman bharat pradhan mantri jan arogya yojana adding 365 new procedures so you have to just remember this is health benefit package 2022 and differential pricing is introduced for the first time based upon the type of the city and level of the care next uttarakhand chief minister launched corruption free uttarakhand application 1064 we already covered this question next is crpf for central reserve police force observe crpf valor day and it is observed on 9th of april and uh, it is also known as shorya divas on 9th of april is we celebrated to commemorate the 1965 battle at sardar post in the run of kach area of the gujarat against pakistan and the day is annually observed as a tribute to the brave men of the crpf and 9th of april 2022 marks the observance of 57 crpf valor day and vg kanetkar you can remember the name it is static question vg kanetkar was first appointed as the first director general of crpf now director general is kuldeep singh kuldeep singh move on to next question next question is of the 9th of april 2022 question was accounts in which shares of various companies are traded in electronic form are called 
so this is known as dematerialized account so answer of this question is a so this is known as dmat account or dematerialized account moving to next question it is the question of the day now very simple question when the purchasing power of money decreases the rate of inflation so you have to tell me answer only in the comment box read the question carefully i am repeating again when the purchasing power of money decreases the rate of inflation so you have to tell me answer only in the comment box i am waiting your answer but please like this video share this video as much as possible and please subscribe this channel if you are new on this platform and join our telegram group press this bell button so that you can receive the notification on time but it is a fair cloud promise that it will boost your confidence in the general awareness section definitely don't take life so much serious life is fun always be happy like this smiley thank you guys take care and bye bye